Hi, I'm Steve Amstrip, Chief Scientist with Polar Bears International. Before joining Polar Bears International, I was in charge of research in Alaska for over 30 years, studying all aspects of polar bear ecology. Uh, in my early years up there, I documented the recovery of polar bears from excessive harvests that had occurred in the 1950s and 60s. And in the latter years, I documented the beginning of the decline in numbers of polar bears in Alaska as a result of global warming. My work there culminated with the convincing of the Secretary of Interior to list polar bears as a threatened species under the US Endangered Species Act. Now we've shown that the biggest threat to polar bears is global warming. And at Polar Bears International, we are working diligently to inspire efforts to halt our reliance on fossil fuels. It's the combustion of fossil fuels that is warming the world and literally melting the polar bears habitat. This summer, we had a, a landmark paper published, the first paper ever that tells us not only that polar bears are in jeopardy of losing their habitat from melting uh, sea ice and global warming, uh, but when polar bears in different parts of the Arctic are likely to start to disappear. An important aspect of this paper is that it shows that we still have time to save polar bears over much of their range if we act quickly. Now, at the same time that we're trying to halt global warming, the ultimate threat to polar bears, we need to protect them in vital areas on the ground. And the most important of those is where mother polar bears go to have their cubs. Recently, the US government had proposed to uh, open the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, the most important denning habitat in Alaska, uh, the government had proposed to open that habitat for oil and gas development. This clearly would not have been in line with trying to protect habitats for uh, continuing reproduction of polar bears in Alaska. And I've spent the last two years diligently working to try and halt this proposal, and it looks like we actually were successful. Uh, the uh, leases that were to go into effect this winter are not going to be let. And uh, we uh, think that we may be at a point with the election results in 2020 that this threat will not reemerge. Uh, at the same time that we've been trying to protect denning habitats, we've also been continuing to study polar bear maternal denning. And my colleagues at PBI have been working uh, uh, to understand denning ecology in Svalbard, where perhaps more polar bears den in a single area than any place else in the world. And if we can understand the risks that these bears face in their natural environment and their behaviors, we can learn a lot more about how to protect denning as we go forward. PBI also continues to work on developing new methods to locate polar bear dens under the snow. A den in the wintertime looks just like any other snowdrift. Bears create these little caves that are underneath the surface of the snow, continuing snow drifts over them, and you can't see them with the naked eye. But there are methods for detecting the heat signature under the snow, and we are working to develop new methods that might more accurately predict or tell us where polar bear dens are in that vast habitat out there where everything pretty much looks the same. We couldn't have done any of these things without your support. And with your continued support, we will continue this work, and I'm confident we will save polar bears and their Arctic habitats.